7.2 and 7.3 cover the dot product. They talk about both the geometric and algebraic vectors. So I'm going to do those together because I think it makes more sense. And also, they also talk about um, vectors in three dimension, which is pretty much the same as two dimension, except you just do one more calculation for the third variable. So you would have something like x, y, z. So we'll talk about those a little bit later. Um, my unit tests always covered everything up to the dot product and applications of the dot product, which I will do next, called scalar projections. And um, then I go into the three dimension one. It's just my method of teaching. Your teacher might do it the same way. I think a lot of teachers kind of took that tack after seeing the textbook and not really liking the way it was done. But anyway, I will leave at the end of this lesson the homework assignments that I would have given for this lesson and uh, maybe you can match those up with yours. Okay, don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching the channel, please subscribe. It helps others come to the channel and uh, making me more popular means making my um, search engine values higher, which means more people will come to the site, which means I can help more people. So let's go, the dot product. Vectors are multiplied using the dot product or the cross product, and we will do that one next in the next chapter. The dot product gives a number or a scalar, right? A number is just a scalar value as an answer, not a vector. We can calculate the dot product in two different ways. So this dot, that means something different now. It doesn't just mean multiplied anymore. It's a dot product. So a vector A dotted with vector B is a magnitude of A times a magnitude of B times the cos of theta. And that's when you have a geometric vector. And geometric vectors are ones like this that aren't on a Cartesian plane. So we have magnitude of two different vectors and an angle between them. So if I wanted to figure out what the dot product of this would be, I'd say, well, A, vector A dotted with vector B is equal to the magnitude of A, which is 3, times the magnitude of B, which is 5, times the cos of 35 degrees. And you would do that on your trusty calculator, which I haven't done yet, so we'll do that very quickly. So we have 3 times 5 times the cos of 35, and I get about 12.29. Approximately, little, little dot, 12.29. Okay, so the other way is the algebraic method. And that means we have coordinates. In this case, we have a vector A is 2, 3. So these are position vectors. And um, when we do the dot product of these two a different way, like two different formulas, we have AX, BX. So we're multi multiplying the X coordinates of the A and the B vectors together. And then we add the vector um, y coordinates that are multiplied together. Okay, so ax, bx, ay, by. This times this plus this times this. Very simple. So if I have 2, 3 and minus 3, 7, then the vector calculation here, the dot product, is going to be 2 times minus 3, I guess I could have just put that in brackets, plus 3 times 7, so it's 21 minus 6 um, is 15. Minus 6 and 21. Okay, so that's how you would use the algebraic calculation, and that's using the geometric formula. Okay, the next question, it says, find the dot product using both methods. Okay, so in order for me to use the first method, I obviously need to know what the magnitude of A and B are, because that's part of the formula. So if you write out your formulas, you're sure not to make a mistake, but let's find the magnitudes. I'll just put them over to the side here a little bit. So the magnitude of A, remember to find the magnitude, you just sum the squares of each of the numbers and take the square root. So I'm going to do minus 6 squared plus 8 squared. And 36 and 64 is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. And the magnitude of B. 
So the magnitude of b is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared, and that's 25, and 144 is 169. Square root of 169 is 13. How lovely. Perfect numbers to work with. Okay, so the first method, I'll write out the equation a dot b. Always write out your equations, right? Do this in your when you're doing your homework. Don't just try to get to an answer, because if you write out the formulas, they become more familiar to you, and you'll be um, more apt not to make a mistake on the test. So a dot b is magnitude of a, so the magnitude of a is 10, times the magnitude of b is 13, times the cos of 59.5 degrees. And if you do that, I'm not going to get my calculator out, it's about 66. So it's showing that the same thing works for the other formula. So if I do um, a dot b, and I'm using the algebraic method, I would do... Um, Here's my A, my B. I should write them out over here. Well, you can find them. They're over here on this side of the page. So I do minus 6 times 5. Minus 6 times 5. So I multiply the x's together. And I'm going to add the product of the sum of the y coordinates. So 8 times 12. 8 times 12. And that's going to give me, this is minus 30. And 12 times 8 is 96. And you can see that adds up to 66 as well. Exactly. Okay, so now let's take another little calculation here. Assuming we didn't know the angle between the two vectors. And this is probably one of the main uses of the dot product. Is I have two vectors and I want to know what the angle is between them. So in order for that to work, they have to be geometric, right? Well, no, that's not true. They need to be algebraic. Or they need to be geometric. Whatever your choice here, you can actually convert between the two quite easily, couldn't you? Because we did that for both of these. So let's say I didn't know what um, I didn't know what the angle was, but in order to use um, a formula that's going to give me an angle. Obviously, I can't use the algebraic calculation. I have to use this one. Can you see what I'm pointing to? Nope. So we have to use this one because it has the cos of theta in it. This one doesn't. So a dot b is equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cos of theta. So I can simply rearrange this equation to solve for cos theta. And that's what I'm going to do. So cos theta equals the dot product of the two vectors divided by their magnitudes. Magnitude of B. Okay, so I've got that all set up. Now I just have to know what the dot product of A and B are. Um, we did that right here. So just to save some time, I'm going to say, okay, well that means the cos of theta is equal to this. So there's the dot product divided by the magnitude of the two vectors. That's going to be 10 times 13 and that gives me 66 over 130 and you do second function cos of this and you'll get theta is approximately equal to 59.5 degrees surprise surprise right we knew that was going to work okay so what we've shown here right now then is that there are two formulas for the dot product um, where we use the cos of theta one where we just use the coordinates for the algebraic vectors. Very important. Okay, so moving on, if we say, if the a dot b, so the dot product is vector uh, magnitude of a, magnitude b, cos theta, and theta is the angle between vector a and vector b when arranged tail to tail. Okay, so that's important that you know they're always tail to tail. So you're always going to be like this, right? So if this was vector A, vector B, then we could find this angle. So if the angle between these two vectors, A and B, is less than 90 degrees, then you could see that simply by looking at the calculation here, if we use a number here less than 90 degrees, where the cos of something in the first quadrant is positive, so we're going to get a positive answer. So that's important that 
you can tell by the um, the scalar that you get if it's positive then you know the angle had to be less than 90 degrees the most important calculation here is to prove that two vectors are orthogonal and orthogonal simply means it's another word for saying perpendicular okay so if you see that word and you go i have no idea what they're talking about so if you're proving something is orthogonal, you're proving the vectors are perpendicular, and we're going to use that a lot in, I think, chapter 8. So if you have two vectors that are orthogonal, you know that the cos of 90 degrees is equal to 0. So if you, have, if you want to prove something is orthogonal, you want to prove that the dot product is equal to 0. And that's going to be something you're going to use um, more than once. Okay, so if we're in, now remember that this is, the theta is between zero and 180 degrees. So when I'm in this quadrant here, so between 90 and 180 degrees, remembering your cast rule for trigonometry, in this quadrant, cos is negative, right? And just like I said for the first one, in this quadrant, cos was positive. So that's why we got a positive dot product. But in this quadrant, the dot product will be negative. And that's what you need to take away from this little explanation. As well, the properties of the dot product, um, they're pretty simple. And I'm going to do a question from your homework at the end of this lesson using these properties and it will help you to understand how to get the answer if you know what these properties are. So for non-zero vectors, non-zero, okay, they have to have some magnitude and direction, not a zero vector. The dot product of the two vectors are perpendicular if their dot product is zero. And again, I can't emphasize how important this one is. Very important. Okay, very important like this guy. Okay, so if the dot product of u times v, that's the same as the dot product of v times u. So that's the associative property, right? Or the commutative property. u vector u dot vector u is the absolute value of vector u squared. That makes sense. I've got something times itself is squared. And um, if you square it, obviously it's going to be positive. So <clears throat> That's showing you the absolute value. A constant times a vector dotted with another vector is the same thing as a constant times the dot product of the vectors. So you could do u dot v and then multiply everything by k. Or you could do um, vector u dotted with k times vector v. In other words, you can put this k wherever the heck you want. If you have vector u dotted with the sum of two vectors, then it's the dot product of u and v plus the dot product of u times w. We're going to do one in, um, in the last example that, that shows this a little more clearly, and it's one that my students have had some problems with because they didn't understand this part. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> Triangle DEF has vertices D minus two and six, E, 1, 2, and F, 5, 4. Calculate the angle DEF using the dot product. So I want to know what this angle is here, right? I want to know this angle. So in order for me to know what this angle is, the first thing I have to do is, well, I made a sketch. That was the first thing. But the second thing I need to do is I need to write the position vectors. So write as position vectors. That's so that I can use the magnitudes properly and to determine the angle. Right as position vectors. So if you tried to do this without doing that, you're not going to get to the right place. So I want to know what ED is. So remember, vector ED is going to be D minus A. So D minus A. So that means I've got um, D minus E. So D minus E. So minus 1, minus 2, minus 1. Well, let's write this out here. Minus 2, minus 1. That's going to be my x-coordinate. 
and 6 minus 2 is my y coordinate. So that's minus 3, 4. You might also at this point want to write out what the magnitude is because you're going to need that in your calculation for the dot product, right? So let's do that. The magnitude of ED is equal to, so that's minus 3 squared plus 4 squared. And that's the really nice one that gives you 25, so that is 5. Okay, so this is going to be at minus 3 and 4. So that's here. I'm going to put it in a color. In a color. Minus 3. So that's going to be like this. I'm not going to get out a ruler because I think I can freehand that one. And the other vector, EF. So remember that's F minus E, right? F minus E. So F minus E. So I have 5 minus 1 for my x coordinate and I have minus one, um, oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong spot, that's a four, so four minus two. And that's going to give me four, two. And the magnitude of EF is going to be the square root of four squared plus two squared. That's the square root of 20. And hopefully you can write that out in a nicer format. So I can write it as a mixed radical of 2 square root 5. So that's like 4 times 5. I took out 4. Okay, so I have 4 and 2. That's uh, about here. And so my triangle is going to be right there. Okay, now I have a position. So now I have to use my calculation here. I, oh, I didn't really leave enough room. Darn. I'm going to start it here and I'll probably end up moving it to the right as we go along, but you'll catch on. Okay, so the cos of theta is going to be equal to vector ED dotted with vector EF divided by the magnitude of ED times the magnitude of EF. Okay, so I have room to do this one. ED times EF. So that's these two here. Okay, that's where I'm getting my numbers from. So minus 3 times 4. Minus 3 times 4 plus 4 times 2 divided by the magnitude of ED was 5 and times 2 root 5. So 5 times 2 root 5. I'm going to bring it way up over here. So that's minus 12 plus 8, that's minus 4. And 5 times 10 root 5, uh, 5 times 2 root 5 is 10 root 5. That's cos theta. So theta equals, so I would do cos minus 1. I'll write that up for you this time just in case. Uh, we could have simplified this, right? This could have been minus 2 over 5 root 5 if you wanted to get fancy. And sorry to carry this around so far, but we get theta is approximately equal to 100 degrees. And that kind of looks right, doesn't it? It's a little more than perpendicular. Okay, so remember that you had to sketch it. You had to write it as a position vectors, all the position vectors. You needed to find ED, EF, the magnitude of each of them. I put one of these on my unit test and I had so many students have trouble trying to figure this all out or they tried to use some sort of grade 10 method which, um, you know, when you're in grade 12 calculus and you do a grade 10 method, the teacher kind of goes, hmm, didn't I teach you anything? Didn't I teach you anything at all? Okay, so let's take a look at this question here. This is question 11 from your homework assignments. It says vectors a, vector a minus 5b and vector a minus vector b are perpendicular or orthogonal, right? That's the new word of the day, orthogonal. If vector a and vector b are unit vectors, that means they're equal to 1, right? The magnitude, magnitude is 1. Then determine the dot product. Okay, so... What I do know is that 
a minus 5b, so that's my first vector, dotted with, so the dot product of these, so that's vector a minus vector b, has to be equal to 0. Now, if you didn't write that all out, let's say you wrote it like this first. There's nothing wrong with this. Magnitude of this one times the magnitude of this vector. So times the cos of 90 degrees. And I know the cos of 90 degrees equals 0. So that means this whole side is 0. So this equals 0. Nice. We've got rid of all that math. So now what you have to do is expand this. And remember that this is dotted. So if you're dotting something, when you expand it, you're dotting the, like this is this dot, what I'm going to write in here is not multiplication, it's the dot product. So if I do vector A dotted with vector A, I get vector A dotted vector A. And I get vector A or minus vector A dot vector B. That's that one. And I do this one. So I get minus 5b dot vector a. And the last one I would get plus 5b dot b. Okay, now going back to this part of the question here, this little lesson. So I said when I dot two vectors that are the same, that's the same as the magnitude of the vector squared. So that means I can go back here and I can simplify this one. So this is the magnitude of vector a squared and a dot b and b dot a, they're the same. So minus one minus five, that gives me minus six vector a dot vector b and five b dot vector b is plus five vector b squared equals zero. These, um, this I can move to the other side, so I'm going to say this is six vector a dot vector b, because I wanted to find a dot b. That was the question, right? Determine a dot b. So I've got that over here. And on this side, um, because vector a, these are unit vectors, so the magnitude of this is going to be one, and the magnitude of this is going to be 1. So I'm just going to write that over here so you remember where I got that from. If these are equal to 1, I have 1 plus 5 is 6 on this side. Those aren't b's. Those are 6's. And if I divide both by 6, I get vector a dot vector b is equal to 1. So the dot product of a and b is 1. And that's, um, oh, I said I was going to tell you what my homework assignment would be, just so you can see there's some from, from two sections here. So my class would have done page 377, 1 to 5, 6a and b, 7a and d, 8, 9a and 11. And on page 385, it's going to be, oh, sorry, 385, um, 2a, 6ab and 11. And this just made sure they were only doing um, two dimensions or, or vectors in R2 as opposed to um, R3, which I'm, I covered in the next chapter. So you might have to kind of look around a bit to find, uh, depending on how your teacher does it. So what I will do next after this lesson is the unit test that I would have given my students. It would all be based on R squared vectors. Um, well, not the next lesson, the one after this one, because we haven't done uh, vector and scalar projections. Okay, so see you in the next video.